encourage you to approach this course with an open mind. Don't judge the process of how you're learning. Instead, I'm going to strongly encourage you to judge the, what do you think? The results. That's exactly right. <laughs> judge the teacher. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> judge the results that you're getting. I'll put it this way. Um, if you had the ability, it's Mary Beth, right? Mary Beth, if you had the ability to walk into a room full of 20 people that you'd never met before and inside of an hour be able to call all of them by their name comfortably, is that weird? That's, thank you for being honest. Yes, that's weird, right? Not many people can do that. It's not the norm, right? If you had the ability to get up in front of a group of people and deliver a presentation flawlessly without having to use a single written note, that's weird. Some of the things that you guys would really like to accomplish, they're not normal. So all I'm saying is don't judge the process of how you're learning. Just tell you right up front, it seems a little odd to some people at first. Strongly encourage you to judge the results that you're getting because um, you will blow your mind in a really positive way. You'll end up doing things that you never even thought that you could do. Say that you had to take those 20 items and just do it using rote memory. You just had to sit there and study the list and go over it and over it and over again. Realistically, how long do you think that would take to commit those 20 items to memory using rote memorization? I'm hearing a couple different things. I'm, I'm hearing, I heard somebody said an hour or two. I heard somebody say a day or two. If we could take this list of 20 items and commit it to memory perfectly, accurately, and permanently, and make that happen in 10 minutes, how many of you would think that that's at least pretty good? Most of you, okay. That's good, because we're actually going to get it done in six minutes or less. Here's the most important reason why we always start with association. It's because this exercise that we're about to do is the best way that we've ever found to help you guys learn what we start learning what we call the language of your memory. Okay? We speak to each other in English or Spanish or German or whatever our languages may be. The language of your memory is pictures, right? The reason why we're going to spend so much time working with the mental file folder system is that this is the only system that we've ever found that when it's used properly it will give you instant recall of pretty much anything that you use it for and when I say anything I literally mean anything I've seen people use the mental file folder system to remember like a grocery list which is a good application I've seen people use it to remember lists of things to do both short long anywhere in between. I've seen people use this to remember presentations that they had to give to an individual or to a group. I've seen people use the mental file folder system as a really effective way to remember people's names, like literally as many as you need to. Um, I've, e I've seen people use it for test taking in a lot of different cases, whether that's adults or kids. Uh, I've even seen people use the mental file folder system to remember stuff like where they left their keys. What you actually just learned is an amazing technique for how to deliver speeches and or presentations of any kind to an individual or to a group without ever having to use one single written note. 93% of communication is what? Nonverbal. Non Anytime, Jim, you and I were talking about how you've been in sales for about a year or two. When you're talking to a customer, right? Or Mike, when you're running a sales meeting for 25 people at the TH, anytime you're trying to cr communicate a message, only about 7% of the message that people receive is found in the actual words that you're saying. The other 93%, what's way more important in communication is your body language, right? Your tone of voice. And then a lot of communication is just the overall like energy and confidence and conviction that you communicate with. Y'all following this? Okay. 93% of communication, nonverbal. Combine that with this statistic. Statistically, do any of you know what the third biggest fear in America is? It's not public speaking. Someone said dying, that's correct. Dying is the third biggest fear. Public speaking, number one. <laughs> Think about that for just a second. It really is true. What's number two? Number two is dying while speaking in public. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what number two is. 
I think it's like spiders or heights or something that would make sense. So right? why is that? What is it that people are afraid of? Okay, there's the fear of failure, right? There's the fear of criticism. Chris, again, say that out loud. Fear of forgetting something halfway through. The real thing that people are afraid of is that they're afraid they're going to forget what they're supposed to say. Does that make sense? And I'm like the like I guess if you wanted to get into the psychology of it, the thing that people really are afraid of is the the result of being criticized or failing or whatever. But the real trigger is if you can fix this, if you can make somebody confident that they're gonna remember what they're supposed to say, the other fears tend to go away all by themselves. How many of you, at least one of the reasons that you chose to attend this class is because you wanted to be better at remembering names? Okay. My question is, why? Why do you want? This is actually the most important question. Is why do you want to be better at remembering names? I'm asking the group. Just toss out. Why is it? Okay, it's embarrassing when you forget people's names. Why else do you want to be better at remembering names? Okay, it improves your level of customer service, which can help you in your business at the credit union. What do you say, Pat? It feels good. Boosts your own self-esteem, right? Builds better relationships when you can do that. Great. Boosts the other guy's self-esteem. It's true. It boosts the other guy's self-esteem. That's that's an actual scientific fact. That the sweetest sound in the world is the sound of a person's own first name. There's only a couple of things that will cause this reaction. But when you hear your first name, Tim, it not your last name, your first name, it actually causes almost an entire watt of electricity to travel through your brain. Like when you hear your first name. You actually get a mild electric shock inside of your brain, and you cannot help but sit up and pay. It. Best way to get somebody's attention, best way to draw them closer to you, establish a connection, is to properly and respectfully utilize their name. So what you've got here on page 18 is what we call our six-step process for remembering people's names. I'm going to walk you through all six of them. I'm going to demonstrate them, and then I'm actually going to let you guys practice them while we're here.